this week's episode of Fan Fatales. I'm Gabby. And I'm Emma. And this week we're going to talk about our fandom journeys. Yes, and we're going to do it through top five lists. Shall we get started? Absolutely. So the first top five we're going to talk about is the top five movies that shaped us as people. Yes. So these can be movies from our childhood or movies that like we watched more recently that do feel like they have made like a significant impact on our lives. Now, most of them are going to be from our childhood, if I'm not mistaken. All of them are from my childhood. I, I'm looking at my list and I'm like, I think the newest movie that to have come out is from 2006. Fair. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the newest one I have is from like 2016. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Emma, do you wanna do you wanna start off with you today? Sure. Um. So the number one top movie that definitely shaped me was Beauty and the Beast as a kid. Um, growing up with Belle as like the only brunette princess for our generation, besides like Ooh. of course our ethnic girls. And her being book smart and courageous, and I will get into this later as we do top five comfort characters. Um, I always looked up to Belle, and she was such a big inspiration that I had to have Beauty and the Beast somewhere on this list. Um, nice. Yeah. I do love Beauty and the Beast. It is a beautiful movie. It is. It's so pretty. Mm. And of course, like, Angel Lansbury. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, I love her. Yeah, her voice is just beautiful. Yeah. Um, the next one is Wizard of Oz. Um, without Wizard of Oz, I wouldn't have gone to see Wicked, and then I wouldn't have fallen in love with musical theater. So without Wizard of Oz in my childhood, I would not be the person I am today. I would not be a part of the Clone Wars musical. I would not be a part of, like... I would not have, like, met any of, like, my closest friends because of theater. Sad. It's crazy that this movie has such a big impact, but the whole reason my mom took me to see Wicked when I was, like, eight or nine years old was because I was a huge fan of The Wizard of Oz growing up. That is, like, that's, like, a really sweet reason. Yeah, like, that whole, I'm getting emotional talking about The Wizard of Oz. Aww. Who knew? <laughs> Um, that whole movie just means so much to me. <laughs> hmm. A lot of these have, like, very sentimental reasons. Um, hmm. at least in my Same. top three. The next one is the 2005 The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe movie by Disney and Walden Productions. This one is very important to me. Kind of in a similar vein. So I was four when this movie came out, and I remember seeing it very closely after it came out. I don't know if it was, like, a movie I saw in theaters or whatever. I don't remember that part about it. But I do mm -hmm. remember I saw it within that first year it came out. Because mm -hmm. when... So my little sister was born in 2006, so the year after this movie came out. And when my parents asked me what they wanted me to name... Or what I wanted the name for my little sister to be... I said Lucy, which is the name of the little girl in the movie, mm -hmm. because I was so in love with that movie. Yeah, and it I is, still it is am. a fantastic movie. Yeah, it is good. I love it so much. It again is one of those movies that like it's. I consider it, even though like technically Disney would be my first fandom because you know, growing up with the princesses as like a four year old or mm -hmm. e even younger. I feel like Narnia is, like, the first real fandom I consider yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. The next one is The Lion King, which I put this because it's, like, the movie that my family would always watch together. Like, that was, like, our go-to movie mm -hmm. as a family to watch together. That's cute. Um, I don't really have a story for this one. I don't know. It's just, like, the movie we would always watch together. My first cat. Oh, I do have a story. My first cat, um, the one that I had when I was a baby and that passed away when I was, like, five or six years old, his mm -hmm. name was Simba. Aww. So, like, I guess that's a story, but, like, that's not why I chose Lion King. It just kind of mm -hmm. works out that that happened. And then the mm -hmm. last one is the 2006 movie, 
High School Musical, which yes, defined Question. movie musicals for our generation. Absolutely. Question of the century, which is the best one? Ooh, I, I, I'd say the first one, but I love all of them. I think my favorite is the third one. Yeah, my, like, so I'm in RA right now for university housing, and my theme is High School Musical, too. So my, um, the bulletin board is what time is it? Summer C time, because yes. Summer C is our semester. So, like, I love all the movies, and that was, like, a huge thing. I, I guess I could consider it as part of my story as being, it's, it was my first theme as an RA. There you go. There we go. I have a story for each one. <laughs> Yes, Didn't I even definitely don't. I I definitely did not either, and then I started talking and then realized I did. <laughs> so do yeah. you want to go into yours? Yeah, for sure. So my number one is Lilo and Stitch. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, wow, that's such a basic, like, that's such a basic. I movie. honestly no. <laughs> don't think it's that basic. I don't think it's that basic at all. People just like Stitch because he's cute, but then there are people who actually like the movie for the yeah. content of the movie. And I like the movie for the content of the movie, not just for Stitch, you know. And for me, I grew up um, at, in a broken home, right? I had, I, my parents were separated, and, you know, as, as a little kid, Lilo and Nani being on their own, that was something I could relate to. Oh, you know? I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and, like, when, like, the whole line that Stitch says about, um, this is my family, it's small and it's broken, but it, but it's still mine, right? Aww. And, like, that always resonated with me, because, you know, as a little kid, you know, that, that was just something that I always felt, you know? My, my family is, is small, and it's, it's just me and my mom. Or it was just me and my mom, not anymore, but, you know, as a little kid, that, 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 I don't know, that always resonated with me. Plus, I mean, I was bullied a lot as a kid, and so... <laughs> I related to Lilo when, like, all of the other, like, dancer girls would make fun of her. And I was like, hey, leave her alone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a really that's sad me with story. Mel, her being bullied with with her town people <laughs> for being yeah. a nerd. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the next one is a lot happier. Um, my next one is Mary Poppins. I almost um, put Mary Poppins on my list. I know we were on the, like notes our notes uh -huh. thing when we were um filling it out and i put mary poppins down and then i was like wait a second no high school musical fair yeah for me mary poppins was like a cornerstone of my childhood it was like mary poppins and chitty chitty bang bang but i don't remember I most of chitty did chitty not bang bang grow up with chitty chitty bang bang at all oh yes i saw it I much later in life loved chitty chitty bang bang as a kid i used to watch it all the time i don't remember the plot line now so don't ask me about it but um, does anyone remember the plot line of it the only thing i remember is they make the car fly that's like the premise of the whole thing <laughs> um, but for me mary poppins was the movie that um every time my dad and i would go to our we used to have a little cabin in tahoe and every time we went up to Tahoe to the cabin, we'd go to the local library and rent Mary Poppins, and we'd watch it all the time. Aww. Every winter, every summer, we'd always watch it whenever we went up there. So for me, that's, like, one of the few happy memories I do have with my dad, which I, it, it, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. Every time I watch Mary Poppins, it makes me happy. I love Mary I, Poppins. I also really like Mary Poppins Returns, the new one. I do, one. too. I thought it was good. Same. I don't I understand the music like, was really why good. people hate on it. I liked it. I, I did thought it too. was good. I like the I like the I like the, the book premise song. that it was like the children all grown up and it was their yeah, kids. Yeah, I thought it was cute. I did too. Yeah, I like the what what's the um a cover is not the book Please so open it up and take, take a look. look. Right. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, me too. That one was cute. Plus, Lin Manuel Miranda was in it and he did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Dick Van Dyke came back. Yes, and he he played did he play He played the old man. The old right? bank guy. Yeah. Again. Again, yeah. Yeah. But this time when he was, he actually, was actually old. old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for number three I put the Little Mermaid. 
of I don't know as growing up Ariel was always my favorite until I love Ariel until Tangled came out so from you know birth till 2011 like Little Mermaid was my favorite like my go-to all the time I watched it all the time I have the VHS the recalled VHS yo Uh I have one of the recalled VHS tapes (laughs) I went out and I looked at it they're only worth like fifty dollars there was a lot of them that were made yeah but I have one (laughs) I realized I was like, oh my gosh, this is one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um. So my next one is Moana. That's 2016. Um. And I have a Moana tattoo on my hip, actually. I did not know that. Yeah, I do. I have the heart of Tafiti on my hip, and I don't know. Watching that movie, it hit such a chord with me. I think because for a long time I was carrying around like a lot of like pain and a lot of like upset over my relationship with my dad and so this movie like kind of helped me let it go you know like I felt like <laughs> for a long time I was Tefiti slash Teka right and like huh. as growing as I grew up and like as I was became okay with it I like turned back into like this great person who I love I love my I like not in a conceited way I just like I really like the person I am I think I'm a cool person yeah I think you are, so, too. Yeah. And so I wanted to have that as a rem- I That's why I put it on my hip. I wanted to have that as a reminder to, you know, remember to keep being an awesome person. To not let people affect me. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one I have is Tangled. The only reason I have that on there is because I just love Rapunzel. Everybody, like, everybody that I know and I say, oh, Tangled is one of my favorites. They're like, of course, that totally makes sense. You're Rapunzel. And I'm like, I know, right? Yeah, it does make sense for you. Yeah, right? <laughs> just like Belle for me. Exactly. Exactly. So that, that's why I put her on there. She's my girl. I love Rapunzel. Yeah. And I will talk about her more because she's one of my comfort characters. Also, one of the last category that's a surprise. Um, um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so our next little category that we have is our top five books that shaped us. Now, I know a lot of these for me were stuff from my childhood. I think the oldest I was when reading these was middle school, looking mm-hmm. at my list. Mine are definitely all from childhood. Like Oh, I don't mine is like sixth grade is the oldest. So I was like, what, 11 or 12? Yeah, I think the oldest for one of mine is like maybe seventh grade. Okay. Which is my first one, so I think that's... I think oh, that's... mine's my last one. Huh. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a so good do, one. So do we want to get started? Yeah. So, my number one is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Now, I know a lot of people, almost everybody had to read that book in middle school. I had to read it in ninth grade. Okay, yeah, we had to read it in seventh grade here. Okay. And I know a lot of people are very divided about it. But here's the thing. The thing I like about it is I like it not because of Atticus's story, but because of Scout's story and her becoming who she is. I do, too. I don't really care about Atticus's storyline. I mean, that's part of it, right? Because he's part of the story and he's her dad, right? But I like it more for Scout's transformation as to who she becomes rather than for, you know, people have been saying, like, oh, this movie's racist. Well, that's kind of how it was back then, you know? Yeah. When the story takes place, that's, yep, that's how it is, you know? Mm-hmm. It was a part of history. So, but I think, I don't think it goes about it in, like, the wrong way. No. You know, because then Atticus teaches Scout, you know, it, it, it's okay to, like, you have to treat people as people, not for the color of their skin or not for what, they, what they've been accused of doing, right? Yeah. So, I really love that book. It's always been one of my favorites. It will always be one of my favorites. I love that book so much. I do, too. Um, number two should be no surprise to you. <laughs> no. After how many times have we talked about it on this show? Oh, I know last <laughs> week with um, the musical theater, musical episode, theater episode. And then I think our first ever, like, fandom mm-hmm. episode, we talked about this um, story. Th- the quarantine. 
Yep. Who we'd want in quarantine, and you mentioned yep. characters yep. from this. Yep. And I, I bring it up a lot. I love this book. Um, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite books from sixth grade was Tech Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I am obsessed with this book. I love the story. I love the book. I love the musical. I love the movie. All of it. Give me all of it. I've I love it all. I've only seen the movie and listened to the musical, so I'm not as familiar with it as you are. The book are. is fantastic. Okay. Now, I have one gripe with the movie, and it's that it's not entirely accurate. Okay. It doesn't follow the book very well. I mean, that's in- me with my number two. Yeah. We will be here all yeah. day if I start talking about the movie adaption of my number two. Yeah, I'm not going to go too into it. I'm not going to go too into it. But basically, in the movie, um, they make Winnie a lot older than she is in the book. I yeah. think in the movie, she's 16, and in the book, she's, she's supposed to be 11. Yeah, she's 11 in the musical, I know. Mm-hmm. Because That's I know true. the song Good Girl Winnie Foster. Yes. And then um, also in, hold on, I have a little list. So in the movie, yeah. And then also in the movie, it's set like 20 years before or after the book is set. Because the book is set in um, 1884, I think. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I think it's 1884. Don't quote me on it, though. But it's around there, like in the 1880s, and the movie is set in 1914, which is like That's 20 a years weird later. Change. Yeah. Also, in the movie, kind of spoiler alert, not really. The grandmother dies, but in the book she doesn't. Um, and then for some reason, um, May and Papa Tuck are Scottish in the in the in the movie, but they're not in the book. At least from what I can remember, I'm pretty sure they're not. Yeah. Um, but also, Sissy Spacex in the movie, along with, um, oh, who's the girl who plays Rory on Gilmore Girls? Alexis Bledel. Yeah. And the guy who plays, the guy who plays Jesse Tuck is beautiful. Oh my god. Growing up, I used to have the biggest crush on him. Holy smokes. He is so pretty. <laughs> Um, but in the musical, in the musical, the thing that they got wrong, um, is that, um, Winnie's father has died, and in the book, and in the movie, that is not true. Also, in the musical, they messed up the way that, um, the Tucks get exonerated. They totally changed the ending of it, which kind of bugs me, but Hmm. anyway. Um, and then they both got wrong is, um, Miles's, like, overall disposition towards Winnie, because, like... In, in the show and in the movie, he's, like, kind of, like, like spiteful of her, right? Like, that, I, I think that's the that right he, word. Yeah, I'd say that he's pretty spiteful. Yeah, like, he has this negative attitude towards her. Like, he's like, oh, we can't tell her our secret. We don't want her to know because she's going to blab it and blah, blah, blah. And in the book, he kind of, it's kind of different. In the book, he kind of takes her in. I mean, you can see it in the musical a little bit later when he sings Time. Yeah. And, like, during the Time Quartet, you can kind of see how he changes his attitude towards her. But from the beginning, he's kind of, like, towards her. And that's never how it is. In the book, he's, like, a lot more, like, caring, and they all want to protect her in the book. It's really good. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's fantastic. I would loan you my copy, but I loaned it to Zach, and I haven't gotten it back yet, so. And, I mean, we live, like... Years I could apart. ship it to you. Eh, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have an Audible subscription. I have, like, four credits I need to use. There you go. Get get it with one. I, it's we so are good. not sponsored by Audible. I wish we were. I know, right? That'd be fantastic. It would be. I, I just wanted Especially to preface that. Especially for this episode. That. <laughs> <laughs> right? That would be a pr- fantastic segue. Yeah. But speaking of Audible, if you sign up today. Nope. Not yet. Nope. Not yet. Um, number three I have is, um, the fairies of Pixie Hollow books. I read those. Yeah, so, like, the, what was it, like, The Trouble with Tink was one, um, oh, I forget Vidya's, what I, when Vidya's I read. something. I had, um, fe- or Rosetta's. I had the one with Dulcie, too. Dulcie. She was the baker fairy. I feel like I had one, I forget the name of the fairy, but she had, like, given up her wings. 
Oh, I think I read that one too. Ronnie? Oh no, maybe not. No, maybe, maybe no. not. No, maybe no. Ronnie. And then there is... was one. There was one about. There was one about this girl, and she had a problem with like berries. I think she was like a gardener fairy, and she had a problem with like berries. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I remember. I was literally looking at them today, but I could not tell you them off the top of my head. Um, um Rosetta's yeah. Daring Day. I owned for sure. I I did not have that one. Because it's the only Rosetta book. That's how I was able okay. to find that out. Um, so, yeah, Ronnie is um, the only fairy. Or she doesn't have any wings because she saved them on a quest to save Mother Dove's egg. I remember that, I think. And she's a water talent fairy. And she's the only one that... She's the only fairy that can swim. Because she has no wings to worry about. Yeah. I think I remember that. I think she goes around on the dove that she saved. Like, when she does fly. I don't mm-hmm. know. And then I think... Wait, why wasn't yeah. she ever in any of these movies? Like, she would have been a very None of them interesting... are ever in the movies. Like, the only ones that are in the movies are the originals, right? Like, are the, like are the like main Rosetta, ones. Are, like, Rosetta, Silver Mist, Fawn. Uh-huh. Iridessa, Vidya, Tank, Periwinkle. Did Terrence ever get a book? I don't think Probably so. Probably not. Um, but yeah. I loved those books. The next one was um, the Magic Treehouse book series. Which I also have on my list. So do we want to just owned... go through it together? Uh-huh. I owned almost every single Magic Treehouse book. I remember almost checking them out one. in the library at my elementary school. All yeah. the time. Yeah. I owned a few of them. I know for sure I owned the, like, um... Any of them that took place, like, in ancient Greece or the one with the Olympics, the original mm-hmm. Olympics. Yep. And then the Shakespeare one. I My favorite was the one with the magic flute. Mine was the Shakespeare one. Okay, that, that was good. I owned, let's see, how many Magic Treehouse books were there? There, there were more than 54. There was, no. like, 126. They had, like, a lot of, like, the, like... This is the true history behind this book mm-hmm. thing. So that might not be included in there. No, I don't think so. The Merlin Mission, The First Christmas in Camelot, I loved that one. I never read that one. Oh, I loved that one. This isn't Magic Treehouse, but do you remember those book series that were like Dear Diary or something diary? And it was like historical fiction and it was like 11 year old girls and like different historical events. So it was like the Titanic. Or no, whatever. not at all. Really? I grew up on those, too. I grew up on a lot of, like, historical fiction, and then I stopped reading historical fiction. Hmm. Oh, it's called Dear America. Ah. The first one. I just remembered what the first... Well, I just looked up what the first one was. And it was The Dinosaurs Before Dark was the first Magic Treehouse book. Wow, that feels so weird. Do you remember that one, though? Yes. Yes, I do. I totally remember that one. And then, what was the next one? And some of these have been made into, like, stage shows for kids to perform. Wait, really? Yeah, I know Dinosaurs. The Dinosaurs one has. Huh. It's for, like, kids' theater. Oh, interesting. Like, children. (laughs) Hmm. The second one was uh, The Night Before Dawn. Or, sorry, The Night at Dawn. Okay. Yeah, my favorite one was, like, the magic flute something. That's all I remember. It was, like, one of the... It was, like, 126. That's why I remember it was that one. Oh, I also liked Dolphins at Daybreak. Okay. Why are they all alliterations? I don't know. Or, like, rhyming. Like, some of them rhyme. Some of them are alliterations. Okay, so they have the, like, some of the first ones, it looks like. Mm-hmm. available and it's through mti so musical th- um, music theater international so it's musicals not even plays oh gosh um and they have it for dinosaurs before dark mm-hmm. the night at dawn so the f- second one mm-hmm. pirates past noon mm-hmm. and then magic tree house merlin missions a ghost tale for christmas time yeah i liked the first Christmas one. The Camelot one. 
yeah. the one that you're talking about, the Shakespeare one, is stage fright on a summer night. Yeah, I knew it was something to do with Midsummer, because yeah. that's the show that they're performing. Yeah. And the A Ghost Tale for Christmas Time on stage, it's called A Ghost Tale for Mr. Dickens' Magic Treehouse Collection. Mm-hmm. All the other ones have the same name as those books. Mm-hmm. As their books. I don't know why they changed it for only one. Interesting. Anyway, yes, the Magic Treehouse books were lit. Yes. I loved the Magic Treehouse books. I owned every single one, and they were my favorite thing to read. I definitely and did I read not own every time. single one. I owned a few of them. I I'd owned like reread a them. Lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like I mostly like borrowed them from my school library. Yeah. Or like I the public that... library. Yeah, I think I did that at first, but I'm. If I remember correctly, I think my cousin had, like, the first, like, 20. Oh, wow. And then she gave them to me because she didn't want them anymore. And then from there, I just kept asking for them, and those were the ones I would get. So I'd get two or three at a time. I even had some of the hardback ones. Like, they would come out, and I would get the hardback ones. That's so wild. Yeah, yeah all my cousins wild. and I are, like, so close in age, at least for, like, the ones. Like, the oldest one... Right now, it's, like, 24, and I'm 20. Mm-hmm. Like, 25. Yeah. How old is I mean, Jared? I actually don't... He's 25, because he was born a few days before my parents, and they just celebrated... Or, my parents' wedding. Born a few days before your parents? Um, I don't think that's right. My parents' wedding. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. And they just celebrated their 25th anniversary this past week. So, yeah, he's about that's 25. Nice. And then the next that's one is cool. 21. So, like, Got all it. of us are, like, so close in age that, because I'm mm-hmm. 20, that I didn't get hand-me-downs from them. My mom's well, side of the family, they get hand-me-downs. Yeah. Because the oldest well, one is 11. My cousin, who gifted them to me, or handed them down to me, she's 23. And I'm 20. Yeah. Wow. So, I guess she just didn't like them anymore. We also read the Junie B. Jones books <gasps> a lot. Yes! I don't know why that just popped in my head. They turned that into a musical, didn't they? Yeah, it's not that good. It's not? That's what I thought. It's for, like, kids, right? Yeah. They also yeah. did Pinkalicious into a stage show. I had a friend who played a that? cupcake in Pinkalicious. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, an, a grown adult man playing a cupcake in Pinkalicious. Wow. Yep. That was weird. That is weird. No. <laughs> yeah. The last one on my list is um, the American Girl Samantha books. Okay. By Susan S. Adler. You see, I didn't read Samantha. I read the Kit books. Yeah. I was a Samantha girl. I was a Kit girl. Loving, loving World War II since 2003. <laughs> Mine like... was Great Depression. <laughs> Which isn't like, that great <laughs> to no. like, be fascinated about. But I, no. I guess it makes sense if you think about, like, I did Annie right around the time I was probably reading the American Girl kit book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for one year for Christmas, I got the box set of the first, I think, six or seven Samantha books. I think it was six. And it's the Meet Samantha book, the Samantha Learns a Lesson, uh, Samantha's Surprise, Happy Birthday Samantha, Samantha Saves the Day, and Changes for Samantha. Wow. Mm-hmm. I had, like, I a book collection that was, like, a hardcover book, and it was, like, one of those that is, like, the collection books that have, like, every single book in the mm-hmm. series and, like, one binding. Whoa. Like, one giant book? Yeah. I didn't have those. I had the individual ones. I the had that ones. for Kit. Yeah, I had the- I got the box set of the books. And the books are thin. They're not big. No, so it was like- it was like a Harry Potter book. Like a- like an early Harry Potter book. Like 200 pages. So like Sorcerer's pages. Stone or Yeah, something. like Sorcerer's yeah. Stone with- I don't know how that's my like go-to like- <laughs> I don't know, that's like an easy like for people to like illustrate yeah. is Sorcerer's Stone. It, yeah, it's an easy reference point. Yeah. I don't know. I have that. It's not as big as I have that the same kind of thing for, I think, the Lord of the Rings series. And that oh, one God. is like. <laughs> that one's enormous, I bet. That one's the same yeah. width as Les Mis. Yeah, I believe it. That Les Mis is enormous, too. 
Like, this is way too big. Too big. The yeah. fact that they could condense it into three hours of a musical is beyond me. You know why, right? Because I've read it. Or read I most of it. Read it. I, I've read most of it. It's because they literally spend, like, chapters describing histories of, like, characters that aren't important or, like, places that aren't important. Like, there's a That's whole annoying. chapter about the sewers of um, Paris. Like, right Yuck. before Valjean is um, in the sewers with, in Marius. The sewers with Marius. We also get Ew. the backstory on the bishop. Why? <laughs> Who cares? Thank you. I got so so annoyed reading it i honestly skipped ahead after like one fontaine chapter to the barricade boys so i could get like interesting part yeah anyway what what were your top five books so the biggest one for me was the disney after dark um which is the first book in the kingdom keeper series by Ridley pearson yes we've talked about this a little bit yeah and um without kingdom keepers I wouldn't have met one of my close friends, um, Julie, who, like, mm. just moved to um, Disney World for the Disney College program. And she and no Mac way. are working the same thing. No So they've way. become, like, buddies, like, through me. Oh, my gosh. I love that. I'm so excited that that happened. But, like, Julie, yes. she, um, so for those of you who do not know, the Children of Light YouTube channel I was a part of. Um, I played Maleficent, who is the main villain in the Kingdom Keeper series. And I met some of my close internet friends. I don't really talk to a lot of them anymore, except for Julie. But that series was, like, the first, like, real internet fandom I was a part of. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you remember in middle school, but, like, the huge thing was, like, the internet, ro like, the, inter um, the, what is it, the Instagram role-playing things that would be, like, you pretending to be a character, like, on an Instagram account. That was at least- Oh, yes. I had one of those for Kingdom Keepers in middle school. Yes. It's, like, so weird to think about, and it's- I'm upset- with what they're doing right now to the Kingdom Keeper series mm -hmm. as a fan since, like, 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. Because they are updating it for the new generation because a lot of the, like, early books were our generation of Disney World with Toontown still existing and no mm -hmm. um, extended Fantasyland or whatever it's called. New Fantasyland. Yeah. So, they've had to update those with the times, and I really wish it could just stay a product of its time. Yeah. But there are rumors that we will be, um, that we might be getting a Disney Plus series for it. Ooh, that that's is, exciting. if the next book on my list does really well for their Disney Plus series, which is the Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. Um, this is when, um, Gabby was talking about the movie adaption of Tuck Everlasting not being good. This is what I was talking about. Hey, I didn't say that it's not good. I love the movie. It's just not accurate to the book. <laughs> okay, not accurate. <laughs> the only thing accurate with the Percy Jackson movies is that the characters' names are the same. I stand by this. It, it, it's the worst book-to-movie adaption I've ever seen. Wow. And I will stand by it. I don't think a single Percy Jackson fan will disagree with me. Which is why. Like, that, that is huge. But yeah, like, Percy Jackson is another one of those that was like, I don't remember not being a fan of Percy Jackson. Which is, like, weird. I never personally got into the Percy Jackson books. Um, I did in, like, sixth grade, so I was the same age as Percy. Because he's Aww. in sixth grade in the first book. That's cute. In the first movie, isn't he like 14, yeah, that, 14? He's 16 in the first movie. Jeez. That's <laughs> what I meant. Did I say book? I meant movie. Yeah, and you, you, you were like 13. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know what I mean, though. He was like a teenager. Yeah. Because, so, the whole prophecy is when he turns 16 in the books. But mm -hmm. they change it for the movies to when he turns 21 because they cast a 16-year-old as Percy lame so that's why i'm so happy because they're right now casting for the percy jackson series 
mm-hmm. on Disney Plus. The author is like really big into it. It's almost like J.K. Rowling with the Harry Potter movies. That's how mm-hmm. like hands on he is because he mm-hmm. doesn't want a major screw up like last time. Oh, I bet. I'd be pretty pissed if that was my, like, life's work and they messed oh, it up so bad. He's, he posted, like, angry emails to the producers, like, trying to, like, get into the studio to, like, see what they were doing to his creation. Ugh, that's so irritating. Um, but, I don't know, like... Um, but for the casting call for Percy, because they're first casting Percy and then are gonna cast all of the supporting characters around whoever mm-hmm. they cast for Percy right now. That makes sense. Um, they literally put 11 to 13. They're looking for 11 to 13 year olds to play That's the part. That's good. Any race, they don't care at all. Like, so I'm excited <laughs> for this series. Yeah. yeah. Especially, like, if it does well, we could get the Kingdom Keeper series, which the Kingdom Keepers cast of characters is so diverse mm-hmm. already. Like, I think in the group of seven, well, in the group of five main kingdom keepers, there's only two people that are, or there's three people that are white, but, like, one of them is, like, a ginger. Like, they're not oh. all just, like, all white people, you know, in the group. We have, like, mm-hmm. the African-American guy, and he's the artist of the group. Mm-hmm. The blonde cheerleader, which annoys me. I don't like how they characterize her in the first book. She gets better mm-hmm. as later books go on. Mm-hmm. Um, we have Willa, who I th- I'm pretty sure is from like like African American descent, mm-hmm. and then Finn, who is like our white boy with brown hair lead guy, like every other mm-hmm. YA book series, of course. And then did I get everyone? Oh yeah, I did because I mentioned the ginger first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, like. I like these diverse groups because for this next one, I mean Harry Potter. Yeah. That defined our generation. I, I Oh totally. I've already talked about how big Harry Potter was for me in our Harry Potter episode, but like Yeah. I got into it right around the same time I was getting into King and Keepers and Percy Jackson. Mm-hmm. And it's the reason I continued to read. Like, That's Harry Potter really cool. was the book that, like, got me into reading. Sure, I read as a kid, like, with the Magic Tree House, which is my number four. Mm-hmm. But, like, it wasn't what I was wanting to do in my spare time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the only reason I didn't put Harry Potter on my list, considering, like, the enti- like the huge impact it's had on my life, considering I have a freaking Hogwarts tattoo that covers up, like, my entire thigh. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the entire outside of my thigh. Um... The only reason I didn't put it on my list is because I didn't read it as a kid. I didn't read it till I was in, like, high school. Yeah, I, I read it, really I read it when I was Harry's school. age in the first book. Eleven. Mm, that's really cute. And then the last one on my list I read also when I was in seventh grade. Um, mm-hmm. It was, like, a signed reading for my class. Mm-hmm. And it was The Giver by Lois Lowry. That book is also fantastic. It you is. I read it in sixth grade here. Okay. I think the movie was coming out when we were in seventh grade. I think that's why we read it. Because, like, Hunger Games is also on that list. Like, for, like, summer reading. Yeah. I don't know. The movie's okay. I I really enjoyed the book. I thought the book was good. The book is amazing. I love the book. Um, So, one of my uncles is um, an English teacher, and he had the, like, rest of the, like, series that's based on that world. Oh, nice. So, like, there's a series, but it doesn't follow Jonah, the oh. lead character from the I book. I his name was Jonas. Or Jonas, whatever his name is. I can't <laughs> remember right now. Yeah, so the book came, or the movie came out in 2014. So we okay. were 13. Yeah. So Jonas. Just in, like, seven so, yeah, you were right. I was right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was, like, 13. It was in seventh grade. It was, like, the, like big class reading Mm -hmm. and the teacher he made it like immersive in the classroom i remember and like assigned each one of us like different jobs like we were in the giver so like the giver had to give out like the handouts for that day in class oh that's cute and other stuff like that that's the only one i remember to this day Mm -hmm. and i wasn't the giver i forget what i was but 
he made it like immersive to us which is probably why it has such a big impact also that teacher just had a huge impact on my life that's good yeah it's always nice to have like good teachers it was always english teachers for me same the one um, thing that I think I think is really important about that book is how they treat their, like, elderly yeah. people. And I feel like we don't do that now. And, like, we should. I feel like we definitely need to treat our elderly people better. Yeah. But yeah like, that... we should treat our elders with much more respect and care than we do. Yeah. That <laughs> teacher, he, um, he, like, actively had, like, R2-D2 and other, like, nerdy things around his classroom. So it was, like, a nerdy safe haven for me in a time I was being majorly bullied for liking Star Wars and Harry mm-hmm. Potter and all the other series I liked at the time. And he also worked at Hollywood Studios, and I would always, oh, like, cool. go in to the ride he worked at. Mm-hmm. And, like, was like, is he working today? So I got to see him, like, every time I went there oh, because he was cute. always working on the weekend. He worked that's at the cute. great movie ride. Rip that ride. <laughs> I miss that. I never ride. got to ride it. I miss that ride. I it's hated sweet. it growing up because my it was my sister's favorite ride, so I had to go on it like five times every and time we went like, there. Meh. But now I miss it. Oh, I like the Minnie and Mickey ride, but like the Runaway Railroad. Yeah, the Runaway Railroad, whatever it is. We're getting it. Yeah, maybe next year. Okay. So, now that we've talked a little bit about our favorite books and our favorite, like, series, what about, like, characters? What are, like, the characters that you are, like, obsessed with? Your, like, top five comfort characters. My big one is Susan Pevensey from Narnia. Um, I talk about this a lot on lives when people ask me who my favorite cosplay is, and it's, one of them has to be Susan. It's because when I was four and watching the Disney Walden mm-hmm. Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, I looked up to her. And so it came out in 2005. My little sister was born in 2006. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be the cool archery, intelligent mm-hmm. sister that is Susan. And I wanted my sister to be my Lucy, like the, the Hufflepuff of the group. I wanted to be the Ravenclaw older sister. <laughs> Of course, I've now become yeah. pretty much Lucy at this point in my life, but I, I, I like to pretend that I'm Susan. <laughs> um, But yeah, she's definitely, like, been That's one of amazing. my comfort characters. Like, Susan, for me, was, like, pretty much on the same level as a kid growing up as, like, a Disney princess. Like, that is how impactful Narnia was. Wow. I know that you and I were talking earlier about, like, how I want to put Narnia on every single one of these lists. And that is why it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it it's totally it valid. I mean, did. if it made such an impact. My next for one you, is right? Belle, which I talked about a little bit earlier with the favorite movie with Beauty and the Beast, and again, she was really the only brunette princess growing up, and pretty much still is. Let's be honest here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, every other brunette princess is, like, of some sort of, like, specific yeah. area, right? Like, she's like, the Moana, only white she's, like, Pacific brunette. Islander, and we got Elena of Avalor, but she's, like, from yeah. Latin America. So, like, yeah. I looked up to her a she lot really because until Rapunzel's hair got cut. Until, but then they until grew Rapunzel's it back for, cut. like, there we go. Tangled the Series, like, five seconds for into those, the like, show. For those, like, ten minutes. So, yeah. like... And of course, I grew up with this brunette hair. I'm, like, playing with my hair on the phone with Gabby. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she was, like, so strong. She didn't care about, like, people calling her odd. And as a child who was bullied for Mm -hmm. liking nerdy things and liking to read, I really looked up to Belle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My next I mean, one a is totally Ahsoka Tano. Um, uh, I had to. <laughs> I of had course. to put her on this list somewhere. Well, I'm not surprised. Um, I don't even know where to begin with Ahsoka. Um, I mean, the big thing with me now with her is I wouldn't have met you pretty much without Ahsoka. 
We wouldn't have fan fatales without Ahsoka. Nope. <laughs> and of course, like her voice actress no, means not so at all. much You're totally to me. Right. Um, I almost put. I know that this is getting a little high, but I almost put um, Ashley Eckstein's book for my favorite books at the moment, and it kind of tells her story with creating her universe and being cast as Ahsoka mm-hmm. and all that. And it was like really impactful to mm-hmm. read. But. But yeah, Ahsoka means yeah, I, I so much imagine. to me. Um, my dad even knew it to the last Star Wars Weekends in existence was my first one going to as a true Star Wars fan. And my dad waited in an hour line so I could meet Ahsoka. Well, like, I got to experience the park. He was waiting Aww. in line for me in the hot Florida sun. <laughs> like, I love oh, Ahsoka really so sweet. much. Um, my next one is Annabeth Chase from the Percy Jackson series. Another intelligent, smart, badass woman. Bookish woman. I mean, she's literally the daughter of Athena, who is the goddess of wisdom. Like, she is our bookish queen. Yeah. I love, I love cosplaying her so much. Totally. She's so much fun. Um... I don't know, I don't really, like, I can't explain why she's a comfort character besides, like, she's in the same boat as, like, the brainy. <laughs> yeah. That, and then that's totally Padme cool. Amidala is my last it. one. Of yeah. course. I almost put Leia. It was between her and Leia. I mean, of course. I mean, you... I mean, you basically play Padme in our series, so... I mean, so when, um... You're, like, separatist Padme. We talked about a little bit in the, um, episode with Maddie, Eloise, and Ashley about, like, how Enigma got created at one point. It just came up in Mm -hmm. conversation. And I mentioned how when I was brought into it, back when it was still the Star Wars Mm -hmm. sitcom or whatever it was called back then, how I I basically said, I want to be Padme Amidala Mm -hmm. in this. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah, then that's said what that we said. Was, I was like, I would have that, happened. And like, we're the senator and the duchess. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I love Enigma. Yeah. It's fantastic. I love it. Yeah, I just posted a sound yeah. using one of my favorite TV shows. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I miss this character so oh. much. Wait, was it the they um? Him off and I was was really it the sad. Duke video? I also have Padme. Yeah. Okay. The one that I just posted, like, <laughs> last night. Yeah. Um, I also have Padme on my list, so I will just skip her. I mean, the I only mean, reason I have Padme on here is because I love her. She's, like, such a badass. It's the one character that like, we share strong, in common that we both cosplay. Mm-hmm. Neither is mine. Yeah. I mean, I, my same. cosplay isn't that good. I'm getting a new one. I'm going to work on one. She's... It, it's, it's on my list. <laughs> so, my number one comfort character, of course, is Lilo. Because I, so like, I, I felt like I was Lilo growing up. I was like, that's me. That's me. I know. I, I know it's really sad. But, like, it's okay. As an adult, I could say I'm fine. I turned out okay. I would love to see, like, if they made, like, a Disney Plus movie or, like, a Disney series. Kind of like, like what they're doing with iCarly. Of, like, Lilo and Stitch now. Kinda, yeah. Like the same age. Well, like, as, like I want to see Lilo as like a twenty-year-old. That'd be cool. Having to navigate like, yeah. And like Nani and David being there, and like Jumba and Pleakley, and like yeah, I think that'd be so cute. I would love it. I'll bring up what I was about to bring up. Yeah, when I think we that'd get be to fantastic. the TV shows. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Of course. She um, is so number girl. two is Rapunzel, of course. She's my girl. I am her. Same. I love her. Me and my boyfriend Disney bounded as Rapunzel and Flynn when we went to Disneyland. Um, it's just I just I just love her. She's I love her so much. She is one of my favorites. I just can't like as soon yeah. as that movie came out, like I had a connection to her like never before. Um number three, I have Luna Lovegood. Um, solely for the purpose of, you know, she is, like, 
she's the girl that got picked on a lot and that was me too and yeah. she's like she turns it into a strength right like she uses she uses her experience being bullied as like how to like how not to treat other people and she learns from that experience and I she doesn't Luna. just like become spiteful from it and i feel like there's a lot of people yeah i do too and i feel like there's a lot of people who become spiteful because of their experience and she doesn't do that and that's yeah. like kind of who i strive to be and how i strive to be as a person you know plus she's Ivana like, Lynch is Ivana, amazing Ivana, Ivana Lynch is just like beautiful so same <laughs> yeah she's fantastic and I love her and I look up to her so much um number four is Padme we already chatted about her and then number five is my babe my fave Miss Peggy Carter queen of badassery like I love her so much also unpopular opinion actually very popular opinion I take it back she would uh-huh. have told Steve to go back that he didn't belong there uh-huh she would not have let him stay she would have said thank you for coming and thank you for keeping your last dance but you need to go now like she would not have let him stay that's that um <laughs> plus she's just like a freaking badass i love her so much i love her she's my favorite yeah. i just love her i love her i love her she's one of my favorite oh, yeah. cosplays Plus, it's really freaking comfortable to cosplay as Peggy. For me, at least. I don't wear hose or anything. That's why. Okay. Hey, that's And my, nice. my skirt is, like, spandex. That's me with Emma. Her skirt is, like, very stretchy, yeah, even though it is a pencil skirt. It's still, like, one of those, like, stretchy ones. I think it's from, like, Lula It's Rowe. so stretchy. I don't know if you know yeah. about that business. They make leggings. So. I don't. Yeah. Oh, then that's really comfortable, I bet. Yeah, I made my skirt. I was like, spandex, this is the right color. Yeah, which is top five TV yeah, shows, we can which is really thing. hard for me on this list, honestly, because I don't watch that much, like, TV. Yeah. Same. For me, it wasn't, like, I don't watch any super TV. hard. I just watch too much TV is the thing. I love series. I love series. Most of the TV series that I watch now are finished, though. Except for one. Like, there's only, there's well, only two. Well, there's only two that I watch that are still, like, ongoing. Then there's only two of them for me. <laughs> and one of them's not yeah, on this list. <laughs> okay. I. Oh, <laughs> Speaking of Bridgerton, I love Bridgerton. Bridgerton the musical, I love Bridgerton. Same. It's so good. Except um, for, like, the softcore porn. That's a little too much for me. that's number five on my list, so but. I guess I'll just kick us off. Um, Bridgerton's number five. Um, yeah. My mom and I, like, watch a yeah. lot of TV and had mother-daughter bonding during quarantine. And one of the shows we watched together, which we definitely should not have mm-hmm. had because of Same. later episodes of Bridgerton, um... Is Bridgerton. The softcore, yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, my mom and I watched it together, too, and then we got to those episodes, and I was same. like, oh my, god, oh, my um, god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, no, 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 no. <laughs> Another movie I watched during, like, just, like, turned bright red. Quarantine. Yeah, that, that my was mom my mom, was too. And she was Another like, show I watched with quarantine okay. was um, Big Bang Theory for the first time, but that okay. was with my whole family. Like, we watched it from season one to whatever season ends it. Mm-hmm. And it was like one of those things that was like always on in the like background Bang Bang I during think it's like really good. from March 2020 to like mm-hmm. December 2020. It's like I mean, 12 seasons. There's like a million seasons of it. It's not hard. Oh really? Oh, one huh. of mine has that beat. It is 12 seasons. Uh, um, 279 uh-huh. episodes. Oh. Um, I I guess I'm gonna go from five to That's one. A lot. The next one is Star Wars The Clone Wars. Um, It had to be on this list, again, because I met Gabby through Clone Wars musical, and, like, yeah, Star Wars The Clone Wars just means so much to me. Um, Yeah. And one that I'm, like, re-watching again, it's one I watched during COVID, like, literally, like, March of last year was the first time I I had ever sat down to finally watch it, Uh and it's Tangled the Series. I watched, like, the first episode of it, and then I was kind of like, I it gets better in the later seasons. Okay, I'll have to um, stick with it. 
I love Cassandra so much. You also need to watch the movie before it. Just like Clone, War- Clone Wars has the movie before. Uh-huh. You need to watch it to understand, like, plot. Okay. But I love Cassandra so much, which she's, like, Rapunzel's lady-in-waiting, but she's mm-hmm. also the adopted daughter of, like, the captain of the guards. That's so cool. So, you know, she was... I'm not gonna give away the big spoiler for her, because mm-hmm. her character is really interesting. Oh, cool. Um, But, you know, she grew up in the palace, and, like, kind of the opposite life of Rapunzel. Of Rapunzel? Yeah. Um, and then my last one is one I grew up with, like, literally with one of the two main characters in the show, Henry, being Once Upon a Time. He was 11 when the show started, and so was I. And he was graduating high school in the last season, and so was I. That's cool. I literally grew up with Henry, and the main character's name is Emma. Um, I love that show so much. I love Once Upon a Time. Cute. I yeah. started watching it, and then uh, my it got bad like, in like later seasons. I'm I won't. I'm not like one of those fans. He's like, oh, all of it is good. No, do not watch season seven. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. don't. It ends my- with season six. There's no season seven. Fair. <laughs> my ex, my ex loved Once Upon a Time, so that kind of ruined it for me. I can't really watch it right now. The only thing, well. It's been more than a year, but still, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be able to watch it. But um, the only episodes I would even consider watching are the ones with Sebastian Stan. <laughs> you see, the Peter Pan arc is the best arc, and that's only in, like, season two. Okay, fair. I'll watch that one, too. But yeah. I, like, desperately want to watch the one with Sebastian, Sebastian Stan. Stan. Uh, of his character was so good, and then they kind of just, like, leave him off in a cliffhanger. Because he, he left to go do Marvel. Do Captain America, yeah. So then... Well, I love the style of his costume. Um, I do, too. And I, I what I love so about cool. the Peter Pan thing is is usually, like, with Peter Pan stuff, Hook's the villain, Peter's the good guy. Mm-hmm. Peter's the villain of that season. Yeah, I heard. Like, I love, I love the actor who played Peter Pan. <laughs> I've used a lot of the sounds from that season for my Wendy cosplay. Mm-hmm. Like, That's any cool. Wendy moment we can get in that show, I have used. Do it, On yes. my TikTok. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so do you want to do your top five? Yeah, I think I'll go five to one, too, because you did it, too. Um, I didn't so my number to. five, my number five is um, Bob's Burgers, or Bob's Burgers. Me, me and Zach just call it Bob's Burgers because <laughs> we're weird. <laughs> Um, I have loved that show for so long. I have been faithful for, like, years and years and years. Um, also, the new season comes out September 26th, and I can't wait. Also, oh, wait, this is on my list. I'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. For the I next love thing. Bob's Burgers. Yeah. I, my fave character is Louise. I wish I was her, but let's be honest, I'm definitely a Tina. Um... <laughs> I don't know for the those, show, so... For those of you who don't know, Tina, she's, like, the awkward teenager who is, like, obsessed with horses, and she's, like, boy crazy. Okay. Yeah. And she's adorable, and I love her. I wish I was Louise. Louise is, like, super badass, and she's, like... Is she the I one that her. you cosplay? Yes, she's the one okay. that I cosplay as. The one with the green dress and the bunny ears. Yeah. Yeah, and she's always, like, let's let's kill people, like, let's, let, let's commit arson, you know? <laughs> Like, I use one audio where it's like, where it's like, hmm, I think we should do arson. No, no arson. How about voodoo? Like, like shit like that. It's great. Um, number four I have is Friends. I'm loyal to Friends forever. I love How I Met Your Mother. Another show I haven't watched. But Don't friends. count for me. Wait, Friends or How I Met Your Mother? Both. Dude, you have to watch at least one. I know. I know. I don't watch TV. Yeah. We'll get, I'm we'll right get now, you on one. Okay, but right now my friend is having me watch Avatar The Last Airbender for my first time. Okay. And I'm still on season one, and she's, she and I started, like, in March. Oh, gosh. So, I don't watch TV. That's fair. Yeah, I love Friends. I, I went to a brunch not too long ago where with my mom. And it was a Friends-themed brunch, and I dressed up as Rachel, and it was really fun, and we had a good time. The food was just okay. And it wasn't even brunch food. It was, like, 
pasta. And I was like, what the heck? This is supposed to be I brunch, brunch, not food. pasta. I, love I know. I was excited. For, I was excited for my for my brunch. I, was I like, know, this right? Brunch. Yeah. I, love I was brunch. like, I want I want avocado toast and mimosas, <sighs> even though I can't drink mimosas. No. <laughs> but anyway, um, number three is New Girl. Okay. Um, everybody always says like Rapunzel and like Mabel Pines. Oh, I should have put Gravity <gasps> Falls on this list. Oh my gosh. You still gosh. can. Oh my gosh. No, because the other two are like my fate. I love. Mm, mm, mm. I have to put Gravity Falls. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm changing it. Hold on. How did I know that you were going to change that one out? <laughs> of course. Um, because I already talked about the other two, and of course I'm not going to change number one. No. Um, <laughs> so, New Girl. Everybody says I am like Jessica Day, and I love her, and Nick Miller. And I love all of them. I just love that show. I think it is fantastic. I love their dynamic. I love that it's, like, friends, but better. Yeah. It's, like, more relatable. And they get into, like, weird situations. And it's like, me too! Um, number two, Gravity Falls. I love Gravity Falls. I am Mabel Pines. It's it's the same character. It's just different iterations of the same character. Just, like, sparkles yeah. and unicorns and positive all the time. I mean, I'm not positive all the time. But I'm no. very positive. Um, and then so your yeah. last one. My last one is my favorite. My current favorite. I've been watching it nonstop. My mom and I watch it almost every night. When um, when you get off these calls, when I'm you like, I gotta go. Like, you gotta go. You gotta watch the show. I gotta watch the show. I gotta go. It it it's it's Grey's time. Yes, it's Grey's Anatomy. I just started watching Grey's Anatomy. Maybe. Hmm. In March, I think we started watching Grey's Anatomy, wow. and we're on we're on season fourteen now. <laughs> and I'm still on season one of Avatar: The Last Airbender, and it's been <laughs> the same amount of time. I just yeah, I don't watch TV. 14. I've watched like I'm almost at the end of season one, but that's because like this past weekend I like have been like kind of because it's been raining. It's just mm-hmm. been like me inside all day. So yeah. then I'm like, I'm just gonna put on the show as I like. Cut out a pattern for this cosplay I'm making, which is actually yeah. not one in a later list. Okay. Um, but it is a character that is on the list, but it's not that outfit of hers. Yeah. Um, it's Cassandra from Tangled. I plan on mm-hmm. doing every single one of her outfits. Yes. Because she's a f- badass. Yes. Love her. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I've been watching like more TV, but like still not a lot. Yeah. Yeah, there's they just released season 17 on netflix yeah so we're on season 14 right now Jeez. um my mom watched i kid you not like 10 episodes while she was away this weekend and i watched two so i'm very behind i have to catch up but she kind of filled me in on what's going on so i might just like skip some and just <laughs> watch yeah. where she is she kind of filled me in on what's going on so i okay. think it's okay but I do a lot of sounds from Grey's Anatomy. Just you do. I love Grey's Anatomy. And the sound that I was talking about earlier was, um, if you haven't seen Grey's Anatomy, I hope you don't remember what I was talking about, about that character earlier. It, it's fine. Um, but it's Mark and uh, Lexi. It's like, Mark telling Lexi that he loves her. I mean, that's not a big spoiler. It, it happens multiple times. So, <laughs> it's cool. Um, it's, but yeah. yeah. So- I love Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> So I'm looking at our next one, and just to speed it up, I noticed that we have two similar. Three so of the you- same. Three? Two of two. the same. Two of the same. Yes. So why don't we just, like, get those two out of the way, and then we can talk about our rest. Yeah. Um, so Black Widow, which comes out actually on four Friday. days from now when we're recording, which we're yeah. recording on July 5th. Yeah. It comes out on the 9th. We're very excited. Yes. I'm seeing it actually on the 9th with my family. We're all going to go to the theater together. We can't on the 9th because I'm pretty sure we're doing Dungeons and Dragons for our friend's birthday because his birthday okay. is on the 9th. But we might do it on the Yeah, like, I'm going Saturday. home for the weekend. So it looks like I'm going to be getting lunch with our good friend Mac. And then like for nighttime festivities, my, friend, my family and I are going to go watch Black Widow. Fun! I'm very excited. And yeah. then the next and the next one is Spider Man No Way Home, which comes yeah. out December seventeenth of twenty twenty one. And you have it second on your list, but I have it fifth on my list. I'm also like a big 
Tom Holland and just like Peter Parker simp. Same. I mean, the only reason it's fifth on my list is because the last Spider-Man movie really I underwhelmed me. I did not really like the last one. Go back to our Marvel episode where it's just like Gabby simping over Bucky and me yeah. simping over Spider-Man. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't really like that one. So Okay. I thought Mysterio was just a lame ass villain. Yeah. That's just me though. <laughs> um and then so, I can go. Yeah, okay. So the next one is expected 2022. Actually, my next two are expected 2022. We don't know exact dates yet. One is a Disney Plus original which will be Peter Pan and Wendy, and the cast includes like some amazing people. Oh, totally. Um Jude Law, who for those of you who do not know him by name, he plays Albus Dumbledore in Fantastic Beasts and he's the voice of Pitch from Rise of the Guardians. Mm-hmm. Um, he's playing Captain Hook, which plus is going to be fantastic. Yeah, plus he's like Chef's Kiss amazing. He's the yeah. Um, Alan <laughs> Tudyk, who is more so known in the animated and voice acting realm. For I know sure. you didn't know who he was before I no. like mentioned. But he plays, like, K2SO in um, Star Wars Rogue One and King Candy and Wreck-It Ralph and the voice of, like, Hey Hey and Moana and just, like, random, like, animated animals animals yeah. that don't, like, actually speak. They just make noises. He's yeah, because really he's, he, he's the, like, whatever the, like, roly-poly thing that Raya r- rides. He's the voice of that. Tech Talk or whatever its name is. I don't know. Okay. And then, I don't know how to pronounce this actress's name, but she plays Zoe Johnson in Blackish and Grownish, and she's going to be playing Tinkerbell. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ever Anderson, who we have not seen perform yet because she is young Natasha Romanoff in Black mm-hmm. Widow. She's playing Wendy, and then the other three kids, so, well, four kids, so Peter, Tiger Lily, Michael, and John are all no names. Mm-hmm. We have never seen them perform, so I'm so excited. I know that the girl who that they oh, oh I know that the girl that they got to play Tiger Lily is actually like native descent. Love that. Which is going to be amazing. The next Disney owned thing is Disenchanted, which is the Enchanted sequel. Which has Patrick Dempsey of Grey's Anatomy in it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you had this on your list for a while. It was on my list, and then I saw that they were going to make a Bob's Burgers movie, and I was like, what? (laughs) And Um, I freaked out. Yeah, I'm just so excited um, for this movie. Yeah, the only reason I'm excited for it is because I love Patrick Dempsey. My mom and I are obsessed with Patrick Dempsey. I love Enchanted in general, and I'm pretty sure, so I think it takes place 14 or 15 years after the original, and I'm forgetting who they cast to play... um, the daughter? The daughter. Yeah. It's but, really weird. I yeah. thought it was really weird that they're calling it Disenchanted because there's already a musical called Disenchanted. Yeah. It's totally Do you want to talk about that? It's like the, like, what is it? It's basically, I, 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 I was in a production of it here, actually. Um, we okay. recorded it during 2020 in October, um, in my cast at least. And it's basically about all of the Disney princesses complaining about how their stories are, like, wrong or misogynistic. It's very feminist, and I love it. It's really good. Um, but it's very not Disney. It is very much not Disney. Like, Rapunzel is, like, German, and her whole song she sings, like, in German, and it's about how, like, she didn't see any money from any of her, like, franchises. And, like, I played Pocahontas, and Pocahontas' song is about how, like, why didn't they, like, actually follow history? And, like... Um, yeah. Aurora's song is like, I'm gonna embrace myself for who I am and stop being a pushover. And Cinderella's song, what's Cinderella's song about? Um, oh, hers is about eating food. It's fantastic. <laughs> Cinderella's song, Cinderella's song is called All I Want to Do is Eat. That is amazing. And all we do is sing about, like, greasy foods that, like, princesses aren't supposed to eat. Like, oh my gosh, it is so funny. We talk about, like, string cheese and Cheetos and, and, and burritos and pizza and, like, hot dogs. Oh my gosh, it is the best. So, when I looked it up, the actress playing, um, the, like, the daughter grown up 14, 15 years mm-hmm. is a newcomer. Her Ooh, name is fun. Grace. I For whatever reason in my head, I thought it was the girl who played, like, adult 
Ant-Man's daughter, or, like, 15-year-old Ant-Man's daughter. Oh, that's cool. Like, Cassie? But it's not. But I, for whatever reason, I thought it was. That's So fair. I wanted to fact-check that before I said it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. she's a newcomer. She's not Ant-Man's daughter. Um, And then the last one has been on my, like, excited top five movie list mm-hmm. since middle school when they <laughs> announced it originally. <laughs> And that is Wicked, which is expected 2023. I literally looked it up, and Stephen Schwartz said, like, four days ago that it's set to start production later this year in Georgia. Heck yes. So, and um, director John um, M. Chu, who directed In the Heights, is And Crazy the Rich director. Asians, right? And, yeah, Crazy Rich Asians as well. He's the director for this, which after mm-hmm. seeing In the Heights, fully trust him with this Still movie haven't musical. Seen it yet. I mean, it's been, what, three days since we recorded the last episode? Four? Yeah. Um, and I was by myself. <laughs> I didn't want to go to the movies alone. Yeah. And we don't have any casting for it announced yet, but I'm looking forward for when we mm-hmm. have that released. Yeah. I'm very excited for some of these on my list. Same. So, I already mentioned Black Widow. Um, number two, I have Guardians 3. I love Guardians 2. I'm so excited for Guardians 3. I'm ready for all the shenanigans. Yes, I'm, I'm here for it. Give I'm me too. more Star Lord. Give me Nebula. I don't think they're gonna have Gamora in it though. No, I'm not sure. If anything, it's going to be them searching for like like the new Gamora. other timeline Gamora. Yeah. maybe. that'd be cool. We'll see how it happens. But that's not no, gonna it happen comes until out like eight. Oh wait, no, I I read that as March and not May. Never mind. Yeah, it comes out May 23rd of 2023. Um, and then the next one I'm super stoked for is Tomb Raider 2. Um, I love the Tomb Raider, um, video games, the newer ones, the ones that came out in 2013, 2015, and 2018. I've not played Um, those, but... They're very violent, and they're very fun. I love those games. I've beaten the first Tomb Raider a number of times, and I saw the first movie, and I was like, that's very accurate. Not entirely accurate, but quite accurate. Um, it mixes elements of the first and second one. The second one takes place in, like, Soviet Russia. Um... So I'm hoping they'll stick to that. Well, it's like ex-Soviet Russia. I don't know. It's really weird. It's kind of like this abandoned. There's okay. like all the Soviet stuff everywhere. It's really interesting. Um, and it's rumored that the main villain from uh, the series or from the game is not going to be in the movie because huh. in the first movie, I guess I think they killed him off. That's even weird. though he's in the second game. That's really weird. So, yeah, we're going to see how that works. I don't know who, who the who the villain is going to be. I think it might yeah. be, um, this is a spoiler for the game if you haven't played it, but I, I think it's going to be it, but... her, um, her stepmom, Anna. Okay. Um, because in the game, she is working with the main villain guy. Yeah. So I think maybe she, it, they'll just have it be her, which would be cool. Um, but yeah, we're gonna see um, Alicia Vikander come back as Lara, so that's exciting. That is exciting. Um, yeah, I love her. She did a fantastic job, and I Lara is one of my favorite cosplays. I love cosplaying as Lara just because it's so freaking comfortable. Cargo pants and a tank top, comfortable. Just like like Kim Possible, I imagine is. Yeah, comfortable. Um, number four is the Bob's Burgers movie. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> Um, they don't have a release date for it yet, but the creator of Bob's Burgers and um, Central Park, um, Lauren Bouchard, he was saying that um, they're gonna they're working on it. That it's definitely coming out. They just have to finish some stuff, and they want to be able to have people be comfortable in the theaters watching it, and they want it to be like a very communal experience. Okay. So they're waiting until theaters, but that's not like the main thing. They also have to finish the film, so they're not quite sure when it's gonna happen because you know animation is unpredictable sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, that's mm, that's pretty much that my little bit. And then this last one we can kind of fly through. I think. Yeah. I can at least. Yeah, um, I can too. So the last category that we're gonna talk about is top five dream cosplays. And I will admit that two of them were on my cosplay list for this year. I still might do one of them. And actually, mm-hmm. funny enough, she's number five on my list. Yeah, t- one of mine was on my cosplay list for this year. 
I only got one costume on my cosplay list done, and it's not even done. I've completely changed my cosplay list because I met Ashley, and she and I want to do, like, similar characters. (laughs) (laughs) But, so, spoiler alert for, like, season two of Tangle the Series on Moonstone Cassandra. I'd love to do her. Mm-hmm. I want to do all of Cassandra's looks, as I mentioned. I'm right now working on her main two looks for most of the series. So the her, white like, outfit? Lady in Waiting one. So the white and blue. Uh-huh. And then her guard one, which is, like, gray and, like, a red turtleneck. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yes, yeah, so I'm, like, I'm working on both of those. The gray and red turtleneck, I'm kind of, like, piecing together. And then the mm-hmm. Lady in Waiting one, since it's a med- medieval gown-looking thing, I'm mm-hmm. actually hand-sewing it. <laughs> Wow. By yeah. hand? Mostly because I don't have my sewing machine up here. Also, like, she's sewing in the show, like, hand sewing all the time. So I was like, why not? Oh my gosh, you're a saint. I could never. I would um, I'm also about machine. to be in the path of a tropical storm as we're recording this. Her um, yeah. tropical storm Elsa is projected to hit where I am living right now. We just need to call her up and be like, Elsa, girl, rain yeah, power. Come on, in. girl. Um,. So, I was like, well, if I'm going to be stuck indoors, why not have a cosplay, like, already working on? That's fair. And as I was, like, sewing, or as I was watching, like, Avatar and rewatching parts of the Tangled series, I was sewing her. Mm-hmm. So, it's been, like, kind of, like, chill sewing mm-hmm. times rather than, yeah. like, stressful. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's fair. No. Um, the next one is Susan's Farewell Dress from Prince Caspian. This is one of them that was on my cosplay list for this year. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. I'll have to show it to you. It's, like, white off the shoulder and then, like, a floral, like, teal, like, overlay thing. I vaguely remember it, kind of. Yeah. It's my favorite. It's the one that she kisses Prince Caspian in. In I the movie, remember, dude. I yeah. haven't seen those movies in for, ages. For those of you who remember the movie, that's the one I'm talking about. The next one is Princess, er, Princess Leia Organa's senatorial gown from A New Hope. So the white yes. hood. Yes. The the basic, when you think of Leia, yes. that's what she's wearing. And that's so easy to make. It's I know. Just, I just, just need to make it. A sheep dress with a hood and sleeves. I, I just need to make it. Mm-hmm. Not hard at all. I know. Um, I'm right now working on Cassandra. Yes, so, you were saying. Or Cass. She goes by both. Um, the next one is actually a Broadway cosplay. And I love that this one's gown. That huge. Yeah, this one is huge. This is, like, years. And when yeah. I actually, like, can learn how to sew on my sewing machine. Um, and it I is- I will teach you. Please. Thank you. Um, uh-huh. and it is Glinda's bubble dress from Wicked. I love that dress so much. Mm. I the want blue one? Yeah, the blue one. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And I want to um make the wand myself, which the wand is the easy part. It's the, the wand is easy. I might make the wand soon, let's be honest, mm-hmm. and then just like have to deal with the dress. Then you're like, right. "Well, shoot, I already have the wand. I have to make the dress now." Yeah. That that's me with like all of my props. I'll make the props first, so then I'm like, "Well, now I have to make it." Yeah, otherwise it's just going to sit here. Yeah. That's me with my, like, about it. Mandalorian blasters that I made for Sabine. Yeah. Um, that's a good way to go about it. I should think yeah. about that for one of my cosplays that I have. Huh. Yeah. And then my last one on my list is Artemis from the Young Justice animated series. Mm-hmm. I forgot to put that one on my top five TV series list. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I did that, too. It's okay. <laughs> I love Young Justice. It's, like, one of those that I watched in, like, high school, but has, like, had such an impact on me since. Uh I remember going to the comic book store that's, like, in my local mall, like, in my hometown, and me Mm -hmm. talking to the girl about Young Justice and her looking at me and saying, you look like a brunette version of Artemis. Aww. And she's the one I looked up to in the series. I love her. That's cute. She's a bad... I I also, like, simp hard for, like, her character's boyfriend, so, like, Mm -hmm. that doesn't help with (laughs) things. Never helps. Um, with me wanting to cosplay her. Um, Mm -hmm. me with Prince Caspian? Oh my god, I'm literally doing his two love interests now, (laughs) cosplay-wise. 
Good job. I it's hate okay. myself. It's fine. No, don't hate yourself. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it's fine. You want to go? Yeah. So I want to do like a super, super detailed Rapunzel cosplay. Like I no, want to embroider no, like... the like, like the edging. Like, you know how the edging has the embroidery yes. on it? I want to do that. Like I will do it. wet all of your Rapunzel's as yes. Cassandra. The only thing is that it's really hard to find the fabric that has that pattern unless you get it from like a place that like custom prints fabric and it's really expensive yeah so you know the other day i found a rapunzel cosplay at a thrift store and i almost bought it for someone like just like for any of my friends who wanted it what size was it it was like custom made so it was like a corset back it was really big on me i'll go back and it would fit me yeah i'll I'll go back and see yeah later Okay, it was like thirty five dollars, and then you can, like, <gasps> yes. embroider it. Yeah, send me pictures. I can fix it up. I can make it like beautiful. Oh my gosh, please! I sent it to our friend Ashley, so I literally have it on my phone. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, um, so number two is I want to improve my Winter Soldier cosplay. I did a quicker cosplay for the Winter Soldier for um a makeup convention that my dad and I used to go to called Monster Palooza, um, just for like I want to get the mask redone i want to redo the mask because i kind of pieced that one together out of like stuff i had around my house and it's not great and my arm is made out of like duct tape and fabric (laughs) so it's really hot so i want to um redo it with eva foam and warbla yeah that'd be good Mm -hmm. or preferably just with warbla so it's not so hot the eva foam gets really hot yeah. But EVA foam is a lot cheaper than the Warbler plastic, so it's yeah. you gotta, like, I think I'm gonna use them in conjunction. I think I'm gonna use the Warbler just to, like, smooth it over, you know? Okay. Um, I was thinking about that for Sabine Wren. Mm-hmm. She's not on my, like, dream cosplays list, because I plan on having her completed by the end of this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this is definitely something I could fathomably do, just, like, in my free time once I move. Yeah. Just like Again, I'm about house. to be in a tropical storm, so I literally have so much like cosplay materials mm-hmm. for me to like just work on. Yeah. In case I'm stuck inside. Mm-hmm. My number three on this list is Spider Gwen. First of all, I gotta get like, fit to do her first. List. I gotta do. I gotta get fit to do her first. She's on my like to do list for this year. Yeah, I have a. I already have like a bodysuit. Um pattern that i really like um oh, i found one on amazon for like 30 bucks yeah i have one that i really like um but i need to edit it just a little bit in the pieces because like you know she has like the underarm parts that are yeah. like the spider gwen re- uh, pink and green and yeah. like the hood i have to add a few things and like there's a zipper in the front of it and i think i would want to move it to the side yeah i think i would either want to move it to the side or the back so, I'd move it to the back. Number four is um, Padme's Meadow Dress. Is that the yellow picnic one mm-hmm. that I, like, cross cosplay? Yeah. Okay. It's the yellow picnic one. That's, like, my favorite cosplay. It's always been my favorite costume of hers. I love it. I love, love that it. one. Besides the, that like, dress. That was my first Star Wars Disney bound was Padme. Mm-hmm. Like, in that dress. Yeah. Yeah. It's so pretty. And Followed I want to try it by... <laughs> I love Hera. <laughs> yeah. I cannot yeah, start cool. thinking of more characters. Yeah. And then I want to, I just want to get it done. It's like so hard to find that kind of fabric though, like the, the tool with the roses. I'm part of a Padme group. I will send you a link. A lot of them oh, use like, yes. there's like a curtain <gasps> that like oh, is smart. like roses and it's like sheer and you just have to dye it yellow. Yes, send it to me. It's like from Walmart or Target. It's oh, like, my gosh, yes. pretty cheap. Yeah. Perfect. Send it to me. I need it. <laughs> Send me all of the links. Um, and then number five is Mary Poppins Jolly Holiday Dress. I love that one. I love that dress. Plus the, the, the silhouette of that dress is really flattering on my body type because I have a, I have a, um, hourglass body type, but I have like a very thick tummy and like I have big hips. And so the dresses that like cinch in at like the true waist, like make me look snatched and... (laughs) Plus, it's such a classic. Like, it's so it pretty. Is. And the little parasol. And I got to meet her in her jolly holiday dress, and then I saw it, and I was like, that needs to be me. So. I have done the, um, 
her just like nanny, the black coat mm-hmm. one. Me and my now ex-boyfriend, um, he and I were Bert and Mary for Mickey's um, Not So Scary Halloween Party. And we That's made cute. this woman's day, which is like, I'll remember that part of it. Mm-hmm. Not the like. Not the gross ex part. Yeah, not the gross yeah. ex part. But yeah, her favorite char- character was Mary Poppins and she had missed meeting Mary Poppins the day before at Epcot. And Aww. it was her last day of vacation. And I was, like, right behind her in bag check, and she was so happy, and she, like... That's cute. Yeah. She was, like, very happy to meet me, even though I was, like, I'm not really Mary Poppins, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just... I love the Jolly Holiday. Yeah. I do, so, too. I would love to do that. Plus, yeah. the Jolly Holiday Bakery in California <gasps> Disneyland is True. fantastic. True. I, I've never tried it in Walt Disney World, but the one here is great, and I love the do Matterhorn Do we have the Jolly Macaroon. Holiday Bakery? I don't know. I think it's called something different. I think it's called the uh, confectionery. Yeah, ours is the Jolly Holiday Bakery, and we have something called the Matterhorn Macaroon, and it's a it's like a coconut macaroon, and it's covered in like icing, and it looks like the Matterhorn. Yeah, it's ours really is called the confectionery. Oh, okay. That's the like bake shop that's on Main Street. Yeah, here. Ours isn't open right now. I don't think. I could be wrong though. I think ours is now, but we've also been Our... open way longer than you. Yeah. Our restaurants are super understaffed. That's the thing. They can't get people for restaurant staff for anything. Yeah, ours is, like, all mobile dining right now. Yeah, you can do mobile dining or you can, like, at Flo's Diner, we waited an hour and a half for food. Mm, No. I think it's because we have, like, all the DCP people now coming Mm -hmm. that, like, food has been faster. And we don't. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a DCP here, which sucks. We need a DCP here. We love here. you, Mac. Yes, we do. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Fan Fatales. Gabby, would you love, like to tell our lovely listeners what we will be talking about next week? Next week, we're going to be discussing Disney and Disney Pixar as we talk about the Pixar theory and the animation and filmmaking journey of both Disney and Disney Pixar Studios. Yes, and please subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. We are on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. And remember to follow us at Fan Fatales Pod on Instagram to get updates for episodes and to possibly be featured in a future episode. Yep, that's right. And our music is by our amazing friend Maddie Macon, who I've mentioned a few times in this episode. <laughs> and the editing is by our lovely and wonderful friend Kara Lensmeyer, who we love because she cuts out all of our shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> We love you, our perpetually tired editor. So much. And we appreciate yes. you. Yes, we do. We love you so much. So, so much. Um, And as always, thank you for tuning in. Bye! Bye!